we learn budgeting uh, and uh, learn how to use a telephone, learn how to ride the bus, actually got on the bus with them and learned about transfers, you know, you get on the bus and if you're going downtown and you want to go to a different part of town, then you would get the, uh, you would get the uh, transfer from the bus driver and then get off and then get on the next bus. So we learned that. And we went with the children to the, uh, to the schools, and uh, it, it was fun. It was really, I mean, it was uh, uh, a learning experience for us, too, the staff. I'm talking about the staff of the center. And we had, uh, we had, we had another service we had, but we, we ended up, we had two, two children who went to Dallas. And uh, uh, then uh, six years later, we had another one, two, three. Well, our two oldest ones graduated from uh, Kimball High School in, uh, in uh, South Oak Cliff there in Texas, in Dallas, Texas. And uh, our oldest son came from Carnegie where he was living with, you know, the, the Kiowas and, I, and other tribes also. Your oldest child, you know, the grandparents come in and, and that's, the, that's the one they raise. Well, in our case, uh, my husband was an only son, only, and he had a sister 12 years younger than he. So when our first son was born, his his uh, his parents, when he was eight, about eight months old, you know, they they took him and they just uh, I never. In those days, we washed diapers, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think I've ever washed a diaper. Could, for could I share I something with you? I want to interject yes. and have have him help me. My grandmother raised me, and she spoke sign language, so I don't have to explain to this white man why I want to videotape your hand. Your hands are very expressive. I grew up with my grandmother going like this, and oh, yeah. you know, like speaking yeah. and going like this, you know, like a throw you away. Yeah, and here, yeah. That's my grandma so yeah. raised by. So if I ask you to do something, you're helping me. Please do it the way I ask you to. I don't have to explain everything, okay? So I want to get her hands because she speaks probably Kiowa, right? And then she knows sign language, and I'm gonna get to that. But the same way she said we don't look at each other, and and you asked why, if um, if if if. Even as we're doing this with the camera, we're not looking at her. Do you understand? So I'll keep it on the hands then. The hands are my focus I'll right just now. keep it on the yeah, hands thank then. You. All right. You can get to her face, but I need the hands because it shows us as being expressive, not stoic, okay? This talking head thing is getting old, you know, we're on a coin, <laughs> we're on the Washington Redskins helmet, you know, just the Indian you know head. we have a, a Kawa boy? Go ahead and roll, roll right? It's all rolling right okay, We have a, we have a cowboy that. boy that's playing for Washington Redskins. Pardon me? Cowboy boy. <coughs> right now? playing for the Washington Redskins. Right now? Thompson is his last name. Really? Where do you play football? At uh, Oklahoma? Hmm. hmm. I don't know where he played football. But he's, what, but what position is he playing? I offensive lineman or something? I don't know. Okay. Fine. I, I go, can I ask you to speak some Kiowa that, what Kiowa words or messages or or, or a song that you think is important for us to know about, and then a little bit of sign language that you remember, if you remember I some. Don't, I don't remember. I have a grandson who tried to teach me because he was born with uh, he couldn't hear. He couldn't hear, so so uh, he speaks. You know, he put to school in in uh, uh, hearing impaired hearing disability school so he speaks you know with his hands and, but what's really good for him is is this uh uh, uh what do they call it this texting yeah he tried to teach me how to tell i don't text i have a phone mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everything but i don't text and uh so he's trying to teach me how to text and just died nothing but he you know graduated and he's working in kansas city missouri now but uh <clears throat> so yeah so but uh the uh, you asked me to speak some Kawa, and I'll read you in Kawa. And you, there's we have no word for hello in Kawa. Honde onde mo, de onde boyondo, agayem toyi, 
I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're well. Go and walk, walk well. Tage am to ye. You know, be safe in your walk. So that's a that's a greeting. And we have no no good vibes. I'm glad I saw you again. Go well, and I'll see you again. We have no words for hello. We have no words for goodbye. Just glad to see you. I'm glad you're well. And you never ask when anybody comes to see you. You never ask, have you had anything to eat? You don't do that. You you automatically go in and get a. If you have a glass of water, go get a glass of water, and if you have crackers or anything, take them and give them to them. You know, because that's, that's it. You don't say, did you eat? Have you anything to eat? No, you don't do that. You just give them something. And so that's, that's just the way it is, you know. And uh, I know I'm telling all these stories mm -hmm. disjointedly, but, uh, you know, it's just, just me. So I want, I want you to share something with me you might relate, because the other interview we got, I remember my, my great-grandma raising me, and she died at 68, which is fairly young. Very young. Yeah. So, Very. But, my, our oldest son is 68. Uh, so when we were in the city, when my great-grandma was raising me, she used to go on somebody's lawn and pick blackberries, pick cherries, pick apples. So even though we lived in the city, we used to go <coughs> go down the alleys and pick blackberries. We'd find places to be pretty much indigenous in the city. So can you recount any kind of instance, whether it's in the, in the, on the res or in the city, where you still practice some of these things that the white people or urban people might have thought as being different? Well, see, we moved back. Uh, my husband retired in Dallas as a milling machinist. And uh, we moved back to Oklahoma. We used to, when our children were growing up, we'd say, let's go home, it's time to go home now. And they'd say, you mean our home home or our Oklahoma home? Because, you know, we had two, we had two homes. Oh, so then uh, when we moved back home, and uh, we came up in 72, uh, me and the children came back in 72 to our home. And uh, my husband stayed until uh, his, you know, he had given his notice, retiring. So we came back home, and he uh, uh, lasted in retirement about two months, if, if that long. And then he went back for, to work for Riverside Indian School as the, uh, in security, uh, not watchman, whatever, whatever they call them the guy you run from, you know, and that maybe for six months, and then he became a tractor operator. Well, uh, we uh, were not used to living the same, well, I was elected to the, uh, to the uh, business committee in 1973 as the recording secretary for the tribe, and so we had, still had these different hours, you know, and all at once, when he went to work from Monday through Friday, from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the evening, we had the evenings. And we didn't know what to do with each other because we weren't, the hours we lived were, were always, you know, he was there with the kids, and then I was at work. I was there with the kids, and he was there. So anyway, so uh, we, uh, he, he Went to work for Riverside, and of course he retired after uh, 23 more years at Riverside. But it's just, uh, you ask about what we did in Dallas. I'll tell you about Dallas. We had the, um, we had the Dallas Chiefs as our, our ball, ball team, softball team. I mean, just went all over playing ball. And uh, we, we, uh, so we had to raise funds because we wanted to come to Oklahoma City for the, for the uh, National Indian uh, Softball Tournament. Have you ever been to that one in Oklahoma City? It's no, but a lot of Indians yeah, do yeah. come all over. And uh, so anyway, we came, we had to have money to, to come. So we went to get boat. You know what boat is? No. Indian food. 
the guts. Oh, we yeah, we try it. Yeah, try it. Call it boat we, down in yeah, Oklahoma. Boat, it's boat. Cowboys call it boat. Oh, Taniga, Taniga, they call well, it. But anyway, it. so we went to buy. Uh, anyway, we found one of the small towns. One of the guys found it, so we went after it. I'm director of the Indian Center, you know, but this is our team. So anyway, so here I took these, I think three people, to pick that up, and we took it to their place, one of their, and used uh, that basement. So we washed it until it was going down, you know, the sewer, down in the basement. And they said, do you know how to uh, cook this? Because we lived out where, we always, because of our children, we always had a yard, pretty good sized yard. And we lived out in the town. So I said, yeah. So they said, well, we'll have the, uh, the uh, food sale at your house. Okay, that's all right. Well, my neighbor was so excited because I'm going to have an Indian food sale, supper at my house. White woman. She comes over, she wants to help me. I don't want, I don't want her help. <laughs> so I said, you know, I'll call you if I need you. So, yeah, we had the uh, uh, boat sale there, so that was... That's that's a stinky job, to, isn't it? We brought that to the city. You Did know. you clean it? The yeah, tribe? Yeah, yeah, we cleaned yeah. it. We cleaned it. Wow. We 